Hey, so how those Epler guys compared to those Perry Manassian guys? We've got some answers for you. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you want to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Angel content, here's how you can help us out. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to become a Locked On Every Dayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's the best way to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Thanks for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day you've got the fresh brothers here with you aka the super halo bros my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john hey a big congratulations to our friend bryce patterick of locked on rangers a long-suffering rangers fan mike as long as you and i have been long-suffering yes uh, uh you know one of the fan base that annoys me the least probably the texas rangers so yeah. <laughs> props to them and their fans for getting their very first world series but i gotta ask you this question mike how do you feel about the fact that Andrew Heaney has a ring now? <laughs> I'm just going to shake my head at that one, man. Everybody everybody contributes, right? Except for Andrew Heaney. <laughs> Not the other night, man. Five innings, are, one earned run, yeah. man. That's a yeah. that's a regular Heaney start in, in uh, Angel Land. He would, have, he would have glimpses of being really good, and then he would have moments where he would be really, really frustrating. And so <laughs> Five good on him to pitches. perform. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> good on him to perform in the World Series and good on the Rangers. John, that's – it's two teams now in the AL West in back-to-back years that have won the World Series. So is this a trend? Do the A's win next year? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> or God forbid the Mariners. Oh my gosh. Oh, that would be awful. That oh, would be no. awful. That's all no. we're going to hear about this year. All right, friends. Hey, it's our <laughs> second season here at, with you at Locked On Angels. On today's show, we're getting into some conversations about Billy Epler, former Angels GM, former Mets GM, who was recently let go. Uh, his draft picks versus yeah. Perry Manassian's draft picks. Uh, good conversation going to be happening there. But first, Mike, we've got to talk about an Epler pick who's not with the team anymore. Chris Rodriguez is going to the Diamondbacks. They claimed him mm-hmm. off waivers. Tell us about that. Yeah, Rodriguez is just 25 years old, Johnny, and he hadn't pitched in the majors since 2021. And all the scouts say, and we saw it as fans, he's got a really live arm. He has a 3.64 ERA and 15 major league appearances. Had some setbacks the last two seasons after dealing with shoulder trouble uh, for the most part of the last two years. Mm-hmm. He's got one of the best swing and miss arsenals in baseball. And when he's healthy, he's really good. So it's a bummer that he's gone. Johnny, he was somebody that could have started and maybe somebody that could have been a key piece in the bullpen as at well. Least, there at there least. were some conversations about him being a 7 eighth inning guy right and having him in that that bullpen could have really solidified the bullpen but unfortunately his injuries just got the best of him he posted this on social media i want to thank all you in the los angeles angels organization to all the fans that have stuck with me throughout my career this team has made my dreams come true and has allowed me to make lifelong friends which i will forever be grateful for so classy As he exits, he got waived and the Diamondbacks picked him up. And in Major League Baseball, you don't have to announce when players are getting waived or put on waivers. And so we were all surprised when we found out that the Diamondbacks picked him up. It was sources, quote unquote, that picked him up. Now we know it's a for sure thing. And so I was bummed when I heard about that. What were your feelings? What were your thoughts, John, when you heard that C-Rod is now going to be a Diamondback and not an Angel? Well, initially it came down to the fact that, you know, the Angels need roster spots on the 40 man Chris Rodriguez has been going through you know dealing with his injury the last two years try to get a couple starts in down in low a and then they had to shut him down again um and and he's got a history of back issues that it seems like that kept him out for a while then he came back in in 2021 Mike came out of the bullpen and Joe Madden I got to give him credit like you see Rod really well out of the bullpen and then later on in the year C Rod got a couple of starts too mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. you mentioned at the top of the of the segment, somebody that you could definitely see in the bullpen, but possibly as a starter and have starter potential down the road. Now you and I have contended that because of the injury history and when we were kind of counting on him coming back, that perhaps the bullpen 
was what he was best suited for because you don't want to put a lot of mileage on that arm as a starter. Um, but but again, it, it all seemed to be a matter of trying to make space on the 40 man and having it kind of taken up by the fact that C-Rod has been dealing with those injury issues for the last few years. Here's my issue, Mike. I'm very disappointed in this move because mm. I can already see future Cy Young contender Chris <laughs> Rodriguez of yeah. the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah. And it's just so frustrating because, Mike, the Angels are not in a position to cut good pitching. Yeah. And I understand that his fastball, you know, used to sit about 95, 96 when he was rehabbing. It was about 92, 93. That sort of stuff comes back. Mm-hmm. And and maybe they, I mean, obviously, they probably have more insight into the situation than than we do. But from the outside looking in, the fact that he's got a few ticks off his fastball didn't ring any alarm bells to me because he's rehabbing. He's working his way back. He's trying to get back to being a hard thrower again. At the same time, I'm frustrated by this move because the Angels are not in position to get rid or lose yeah. Good pitching yeah. that we've seen out of Chris Rodriguez, whether that was the bullpen, whether that was as a starter in the future. I don't know. I, it, it frustrates me because I feel like, aren't there any other 40 man roster spots that we can do away <laughs> sure. with here? Sure. Uh, and so for me, it's it's uh, very unfortunate. Um, C-Rod, good guy all around. Been following him on his Instagram ever since he got called up to the Angels. And Mike, even before he got called up to the Angels, he's somebody that we all kind of had our eyes on too. And and to say, Hey, that guy looks like he'll be something special. And I think he still will be something special. I'm just very frustrated as a fan when your number one need in the organization is good pitching. And you had that with C rod. Now, again, do the injuries outweigh the potential? I don't know. I feel like you could have had a little more patience with him, but maybe two years of patience is enough. So those are my thoughts, your response, your thoughts on the matter. Yeah. You know, I think he's somebody that maybe has a bit of the uh, Kyle Bradish vibe, right? Like he's going to go and perform really well somewhere else. And, and I, I can hear your frustration in the fact that but we didn't even, is... we didn't even get to see Bradish as an angel. Oh, right. right. And, and so we, it was kind of fine. Cause it was like, we don't know what we have in Bradish. Sure. Right. Sure. But then, with C Rod, like we do, we did get to see what we had in him. Yeah. So I think that's what makes it more frustrating for me. Sure. Well, and with with all of the trades and then trading away, what could be potentially yeah, quality Kai, Kai Bush and, yeah, yeah, right. I, that that's where I understand the frustration as well because this isn't a team that should be getting rid of their pitchers. It's a team that should be, you know, building on that and accumulating pitching. And and, because it seems like they just haven't been able to do that over the last few years and then really produce quality pitchers. And so that this is a a really frustrating decision. And you're right. Is there anybody else on the 40 man roster that you could let go that you could send away if you need to make (laughs) Suarez? Right. I mean, there's, (laughs) there's a ton of other guys. I think that you've seen probably more of and could evaluate in a better way. And, and perhaps the evaluators and the scouts in the Angels organization have a list of who goes where. And and it seems like C-Rod was not high on that list. And yeah. especially if you have him on a list with Suarez, maybe they think that they've got something in Suarez and they just need to work some things out. I, no, I, I Phil Nevin is gone. His his golden boy, Jose Suarez, <laughs> does not get the golden boy treatment anymore. Phil Nevin is is on his way to San Diego, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> It, it makes it it makes me wonder like why why they're making this decision now and instead of after they hire a manager and maybe potentially a pitching coach because there might be somebody there that you know could really fix this guy or he didn't necessarily need to be fixed but somebody that could work with this guy and and maybe they look at like a Jose Suarez and that's why they're keeping him because maybe because he's been able to stay healthy there's more potential there with him than with C Rod a lot of this is just you know we're, we're pontificating out of our took us. And so we're, we have to think, we have to think, took us. We have to think out loud here as, as to what, what's happening overall though, as a fan, I I really was looking forward to seeing C-Rod in the starting rotation or in the bullpen. And he's somebody because he's got the swing and miss arsenal that I think would be really great in the seventh inning and even in the eighth inning. And can you imagine if you slotted him in, if he was healthy with a Matt Moore and a Carlos Estevez, and even with a Ronaldo Lopez in there, I mean, you have four really strong arms and we desperately Mm -hmm. needed that, especially at the end of the year when everything was falling apart. 
but unfortunately this guy just hasn't been able to get healthy and then he had another setback yeah and so i i, I feel some of the frustration that the organization would have with him and i'm sure that c rod's really frustrated with it as well because that's the piece i think what we don't really consider is how the player feels about it and i think what we saw what we saw in mike trout this last year when they talked about him not being able to play for the rest of the year you saw the tears you saw yeah. the emotion you saw him catch himself and I, I think for these guys they want to be out there they really want to play i don't think yeah. outside of rendon i don't think any of them want to be uh in in the bench in the dugout right i think they want to be on the field and they want to perform and so it seemed like c rod was one of those guys but it just became a setback after setback after setback and then here we are he's waved and picked up by the diamondbacks and we'll see what they can do with him this is one of those situations where i understand the need to clear a spot and you take a risk by trying to remove somebody from your 40 man and another good team goes oh we could use that guy so yeah. i think at the yeah. very at the at the least of it He's going to a team that seems to to believe in him. Now, perhaps if they need to move him at some point, he gets back on waivers again. The Angels could certainly reclaim him. But again, sure. it all depends on how they evaluate C-Rod and what conclusions they came to. But a lot of these roster moves are just so confusing to me sometimes. I mean, the the dispute with David Fletcher and trying to keep him under service time and 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 the fact that there's not a lot of guys on the team that have minor league options anymore, it's it's very uh, uh, it's, it feels like you're trying to cram too many things in a box, right? Mm. Like it's just like one more person can go in the box, and here here it is, here's the team. So it's just it's frustrating at the end of the day, and a lot of these moves uh, are frustrating as fans. But it is what it is. Best of luck to C Rod. Now coming up on Locked On Angels, Michael, you have a theory as to why C Rod was able to be claimed and why the angels were willing to let that happen. Do you agree with this theory? Will I agree? Let's find out in just a minute. Locked on angels is brought to you by FanDuel. You can get in on all of the NFL action this season with FanDuel. They're America's number one sports book. And right now, you, as a new customer, can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Johnny, the Niners picked up an incredible defensive end True. from the Commanders. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what this defense will do this weekend. So if I'm making a bet, I'm putting it down on the 49ers this weekend. Actually, not this weekend. You got to wait till next weekend, my friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited. Next weekend, I'm going to put a bet down on them. What about you? There you go, Bosa and and the new defensive end give me yeah. that all day let's go yep. yeah we fortunately they're giving us a, a little reprieve with bye weekend but again yes. $5 bet mike and then $150 in bonus bets are you kidding yep. me i would put $5 on on chase young that guy is incredible and he played with bosa at ohio state so i think those two guys are going to work really well work really well together so if you've been thinking about joining fanduel you should do it today. There's no better time to get in on all of the action. The app is easy to use. Wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn right now to get in involved on all of the action. Once again, FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Hey, Locked On Everydayers, tomorrow, Fan Mail Friday and we want your questions in our mailbag so that we can answer them for you. We always have great topics of discussion, great conversation, and that's because of our Locked On Everydayers who send us questions. So send those questions in at Locked On Angels on Twitter, at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. You can even give us a call on our voicemail line, which is in the episode description. And, Mike, next week is GM week. It's time, my friend, yep. for us to make our picks to see what the Angels do over the offseason – and we're actually going to look at the results of last year's GM picks as well and see if we were right on the money or if we should get fired. So we'll get into all of that next week. But again, Fan Mail Friday tomorrow on Lockdown Angels. Johnny, with this C-Rod move, I have a theory, and I would love to lay it before you and our Locked On Everydayers. I think that Perry is intentionally resetting the roster. Hmm. And what I mean by that is I think he's resetting the roster by getting rid of Epler guys to make room for Perry guys. Mm -hmm. Because as you and I've discussed, there is a big difference between the two. Epler guys have been more 
athletic. They'd probably be good at baseball, football, basketball, and hockey. They could help out the 49ers defense, right? Exactly. (laughs) However, it hasn't come together for them. Yes. When it comes to Perry's guys, those guys have been major league ready from the start. Mm -hmm. And I think that what Perry is doing is he's eliminating the Epler guys and he's eliminating them so that he can make room for more of his baseball guys, guys who are major league ready as soon as they get drafted, Mm -hmm. guys that are smart, intellectual, that have baseball knowledge and skills, kind of those things that are just inborn. You don't have to teach them. They they have the skill and the will. And it seems like... instincts, baby. It seems like with Epler guys, they have the will, but the skills take some time to develop. So let me give you just a couple of examples. These are the five drafts that have brought major league players when Billy Epler was the the GM of the Angels. So in 2015, three players that have been in the major leagues since then is Taylor Ward, Jam Jones, and Jared Weaver. Now, we Walsh. did <laughs> Weaver, my, Jared Walsh. Ding, there's your Weaver reference your on Weaver accident. Reference. Each of those guys have taken a long time to develop and we still don't know what Jam Jones can do because he's kind of been up and down when it comes to playing in the majors or being in the minors, being yeah. in triple A. He's over, a. he's over the Orioles, right? He, yes. We, yeah. We traded for, uh, yeah. was it Alex Cobb? Was that the trade? I believe Alex Cobb was that trade. We'll have to, we'll have to check on that. Yeah. Have the producer look at that. Um, and then in 2016, Matt Theis, Brandon Marsh and C-Rod uh-huh. have all made the major league roster. And there's some mixed results there, right? 2017, Canning, Griffin Canning, who yeah. I would say is maybe the win when Epler was the GM. And mm-hmm. then Joe Adele's a part of that. Again, mixed results. 2018, Jordan Adams, Jeremiah Jackson, Kyle Bradish, Austin Warren, Andrew Wentz. The only one that has really been great has been Bradish. But like you said in the first segment, we haven't seen him because we traded him away to get Barfing Bundy. And now Bradish <laughs> has been fantastic for the Orioles this last season. 2019, Will Wilson, Kyron Parrish, and Davis Daniel. Now, Will Wilson never played for the Angels. We Gave him up, right? So that he he went to San Francisco. So we could dump Cozart, yeah. Right. And so we never really got to see that guy. And it sounds like he's playing well in the minor leagues, but hasn't sniffed the majors yet. Yeah. And then 2020 was Reed Detmer. So yeah. there are some names we recognize, but I would say out of all of those names, we're not going, oh man, so grateful for him because none of those guys have been super impressive. I would say maybe there's been a couple of solid pieces there but ne- nobody really super impressive. And it's taken them some time. Taylor Ward is the example. It's taken them some time to really develop. On the contrary, here's Perry's guys that he has drafted from 2021 until last season. So three drafts. Uh, he drafted Bachman, Bush, Marceau, and Silseth in 2021. And we've seen two of those guys in the major leagues really perform well. Mm-hmm. Silseth being a starter. And then of course, Bachman being a reliever. 2022, Neto, Joyce, and Medeiros have all mm-hmm. been in the major leagues. And I would say that Neto is the win there, obviously. I think Joyce is going to be great. And Medeiros has a lot of really good stuff. And then, of course, 2023, Sean Owell is the one that has made the major league roster already. And the difference between these guys is in a less amount, a less amount of time, they've been in the majors. Out of necessity, I mm-hmm. get it. We've needed that. But I think what Perry is doing is drafting intentionally, drafting players who are major league ready versus having some development because I think he wants to turn this roster around. I think Mm -hmm. he wants to turn them over and have his guys so that he knows what he's getting, which is why I think that this C rod move is why it was allowed to happen. Even though Mm. the pitchers, even though they need extra arms, I think Perry wants to have guys that are a, his guys and and B, I think that they're tired of being patient. Honestly, Mm tired of being patient with these guys who have been hurt for so, so long. So that's my theory. I'm going to, I'm going to run with that theory. Am I right? Am I wrong? Tell me what you think. I think you're about half right. And the reason why I say that is because yes, I do think that Perry has shown a willingness to let Epler guys go and, and they're not a significant part of the team. I mean, the most recent is Jared Walsh. Now Jared Walsh was like a 36th, round pick back when they had that many rounds. So nobody was really thinking of him, but again, you know, they, they let him elect free agency, but here's, here's where I think the difference lies, Mike. I look at, it's great that you have all of uh, Epler's picks that have shown up in the majors here. And I look at some of these names, Canning, 
Kyle Bradish, Austin Warren, Andrew Wance, uh, Davis Daniel, and Reed Detmers. The difference, I think, is that Epler actually had a pretty good eye for arms mm. rather than position guys because the position mm. guys are the ones who've taken a lot of time to develop and get right and, and do things right. I mean, Taylor Ward, of course, Jared Walsh was another late bloomer. Matt Theis is still kind of a backup catcher at, at best. Yeah. Uh, Marsh obviously is doing much better in Philly because I think that coaching staff was able to identify things. And yeah. maybe that's the disconnect too, is the angels coaching staff and development is lacking and they're not able to help bring out the best in these guys. But again, I think a winning environment has really helped Marsh too. I think that oh, that's, for sure. that's made him look a little bit, uh, a little bit more like an a player when in reality, he's probably like a B minus. Yeah, C no, I, I agree with that. But at yeah. the same time, I, I think that again, they were able to identify some things and improve some things. Sure. Oh but yeah. Absolutely. As I'm looking at this list, I'm thinking, Hey, there's actually some good arms on there. And Davis Daniel is another one that we're excited about as well. So again, all of that to say, I think that there is space for Perry to let some of these guys go because he's more confident in the guys he's drafting in the immediate. And we know that he's drafting a lot of college guys who are near MLB ready because the angels are desperately needing a, a, a new brand yeah. at, at the major league level. And so that's why these guys get rushed up. But I got to say, Epler, I give him a lot of trash talk sometimes, but with those arms in there, I think he made some good picks with those arms. What do you say? Yeah, I don't disagree that he made some good picks. I think that you are correct in your assessment that the uh, infielders, outfielders have taken a longer time to develop. Yeah. The the difference, and it's only been, you know, three years, and and of course we're still going to see the – you know, maturation of, of some of these players. But I, I look at what happened in 2021 with Silseth and with Bachman being drafted. And now they're at, on the major league roster again, mm -hmm. you know, out of necessity, but they haven't come up and flopped. They've come up and really performed. Well, I remember Bachman coming into a really huge game and, and fulfilling his role nicely. And then of course, mm -hmm. Chase Silseth, I really am convinced that Silseth is going to be one of the guys we look at this year and go, man, he has really held this pitching staff together. And, and then you look at somebody like Joyce and Maderos. Both of these guys are guys who have filled their role nicely in the bullpen. And so when it comes to arms, it, it's a smaller, it's a smaller field because it's lesser years, but it seems like Perry has been able to identify some really strong arms and they've been able to perform right away. And when it comes to infielders, with Neto and with Shawnwell, they've been able to perform right away. And I, I think that that's what it really boils down to. Honestly, I think Perry's like, I need these guys to perform. We need to rely mm -hmm. on you now. And, and whatever philosophy is being influenced by that, whatever he's feeling from the ownership from Artie, uh, we don't know the specifics there, but that's why he's running after these guys because they need them desperately and they need them right now. And I think that that's why he's like, I'm tired of waiting. Let's get rid yeah. of these guys and let's have guys that are MLB ready and MLB ready today. Well, in three years removed from Epler's tenure with the Angels, I think some of the arms that he might have drafted that we haven't seen yet might actually have a chance at the major league level as well. I mean, they rushed up sure. Reed Detmers in 21. I guess I guess what I'm saying at the end of the day, I, I agree with this in terms of the position players and the lack of patience that the Angels have been willing to extend them. At the same time, I think I would do a double take before they decide to give up any more pitchers from the Epler years because by all accounts, there's some pretty good ones in that crop. Okay, Mike, you asked this question about whether or not Perry was willing to give up these Epler guys. And if that continues, is there going to be more? Hmm. Because there are still a lot of Epler guys in this system. And whether that's via trade or needing to make room for you know, somebody else that they're excited about who might go. So you've got a list of names here mm -hmm. of Epler guys that might be traded or even waived. Why don't you uh, run down that list for us? Yeah. The names that really popped into mind right now are Adele Adams, Warren and Wance, all guys mm -hmm. that have been in the major leagues. And I think that they shouldn't be waived. I think that they should be a part of a trade. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're the, the best move would be to move these guys because this offseason, we need to solidify that bullpen and we need to solidify the starting rotation. We have a lot of really great guys in that starting rotation, but none of them, none of them stand out as as uh, 
Victor Rojas has said, like we have a team of, of three, four and five starters, right? Yeah. And, and the, the threes are, are guys that I don't know if they can be twos and ones. And I, I you know, I've talked very highly about Chase Silseth, but in all honesty, like he, he has to still prove himself. He's got to prove and, it. And, yeah. And hopefully he can, but with Sandoval and with Detmers, there's been conversations of what can they be, but right now they're threes, they're fours, maybe even fives. Right. Mm -hmm. and, I think that the angels should utilize some of the upper guys. If the philosophy is to get them off the roster so that you can have more of your, of your guys, then I think that they need to trade these guys, package them up and see what they can get. I'm not uh, opposed to keeping Austin Warren and Andrew Wance on this roster, but they both have not been able to perform well when we've needed them to perform well. And of course, Austin Warren has had some really bad luck. Now he's got the, the elbow Tommy injury. John, Tommy John. Yeah. yeah. He'll be out for a while. Anyway, I do think that you can get something for Adele. I, I do think that he is somebody mm. that could really cash in. I, I think he's higher value than maybe we realize, especially after his triple a year. And when he came up, he wasn't bad. The oblique injury slowed him down, but he wasn't bad, John. And one thing that you noticed is in the outfield, it wasn't look like he was overthinking his natural no. taking over. And yeah. if he is running in the kind of the same vein as Epler guys, it's going to take some time for him to develop. I think that now he's starting to develop. And so if you get him right now, if the angels trade him away for a piece, you're going to get a guy that's maybe developing into the player that he's going to be. So mm -hmm. I think they could utilize those four names as people that could bring us some really good pieces this off season. What do you think? Well, as far as bullpen depth, I think that you want to keep around uh, Austin Warren and Andrew Wance, especially Wance. I know that he's not, you know, lights out, world beater kind of guy, but he's he's got options and they yeah. have the flexibility to move him up and down when they need a fresh arm. And when we talked about his grade, when we did our roster report card, he was the perfect depth piece in that like, hey, we need a fresh arm up from AAA call up Andrew and get him up here. And Mike, I think when it comes to some of these guys, I think that's what the angels need to evaluate in terms of their roster and see how much flexibility do we have? Otherwise you run into a situation where you got to give up a C rod because you have no more space on the 40 man. And mm. I think that the fact that you want to keep some of these guys around who have options, I think is, uh, is definitely something that you want to keep in mind as you consider where these guys could go. Again, Warren and Wentz not not lighting up the radar, not going to be uh, you know relievers of the year or anything like that. But bullpen pieces that you can have some flexibility with. Again, Warren's got to heal up and get back uh, next season. When it comes to Jordan Adams, I think that is kind of the definition of somebody that you need patience for. And if they're out of patience, then in my opinion, it's okay that they could package him up for some. You know, he could go to another team that's their entire team is developing and they're waiting for a few years to to get a good core there. Now I will say this about Joe Adele. I want to see him on the team in 2024 mm. because like you just alluded to, I think he's growing into the guy that he was scouted to be originally. Remember Mike, he was a top 100 MLB prospect right. in the system for right. the angels. In fact, in 2020, before he came up, he was number six wow. in the top 100 prospects. And that's the last time the angels have had somebody that high up in the top 100 and there's got to be a reason for that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that the fact that they brought him up in 2020, the weird COVID year, then he's been up and down and, and not had a consistent role on the team. I think you got to give him a consistent role. I think he's got to be in there every day. Mm -hmm. I think he's got to be in the outfield in some capacity. And Mike, like you said, I think he's starting, he's getting to that age where he's starting to become, yeah, you know, kind of like what we saw Taylor Ward, be at the beginning of last year where it was like, this is the best version of Taylor Ward that we've ever seen. Right. And, and then he got hurt and obviously the, the superpowers went away for Taylor Ward <laughs> in 22. Yeah. But here, <laughs> just for comparison's sake and timing wise, I know a lot of people have grown impatient with Joe Adele. Well, it's because you've seen a lot of Joe Adele because mm. he came up at age 20. Yeah. But if, if Epler guys are going to take time to develop, Joe's about 24 years old now, which is still very young. Yeah. But let me let me share with you some of the other top 100 prospects that were on that list with Joe Adele. Are you ready okay. for this? Yeah. Gavin Lux, mm. Adley Rutschman, <laughs> uh, Luis Robert from the White Sox, 
Mackenzie Gore, Royce Lewis, who's tearing it up just now with the Twins. Yep. Bobby Witt Jr., who is still kind of finding his way. Jared Kellenick also kind of finding his way. A lot of a lot of the same hype for Kellenick. There was hype for Joe Adele. Julio Rodriguez. Wow. Dustin May. Sean Murphy, who is obviously the lead catcher for the Braves now. Yeah. And Alec Alec Bohm of the Phillies. Mm. So I'm I, I some of those guys may have debuted, you know, last year, the year before, maybe this year, that sort of thing. I think we got to have the same patience for Joe Adele because there's a reason he was ranked up with those guys. And again, he's 24. Let's see how he does in a full season with the Angels at the major league level. I'm here for it. I want to see what he can do. Again, my philosophy here, no expectations for this team. So let those guys go out there, let them play, and you know, see who sinks and and see who swims, right? <laughs> yeah. Where would you put him, John, if, you, if you're going to give me the uh, starting lineup? And you feel like he needs to play every day quickly. Where would you put him? I put him in right field. Okay. And I'd put him in the middle of the order, maybe five, four. I'd even let him protect uh, maybe the cleanup hitter. Just because if you give Joe Adele, if you groove a fastball down to him in the zone, he's going to hit it hard and mm-hmm. a very good chance that he'll hit it out. So I think if uh, he's not going to be your cleanup hitter, but I think he could be kind of the protection behind a cleanup hitter. So I put hmm. him I put him five. I put so, him behind somebody who could hit. So Taylor Ward's fully healthy. He's in left, Mike Trout's in center, Joe Adele's in right field, and Mickey Moniak is your fourth outfielder. Well I think I think you could switch Moniak and Adele. I, I would and even Ward. I think that you kind of give a rotation there based That's on right. the starting pitcher that day. Okay. I like that. I, I, I would love to see what he can do. I would love to see him be who he is in the minor leagues. Can you imagine having him in this lineup? Oh yeah. And having him perform the way that he did last year in the minor leagues, man, that would be, I think, a game changer for this lineup. And it would be one of our guys. It would be cheaper, right? <laughs> it yeah. would be a lot cheaper. It'd be great on the bottom line. Let's go Joe Adele 2024. How about that? I love it. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget that tomorrow is Fan Mail Friday. And next week, GM Week, we're going to take a look at the results of our GM picks last year, our free agent signings that Mike and I made, and we'll make new ones for this off season, join us for that. And if you want to follow us, you can on Twitter at locked on angels. And of course you can find us on Instagram at super halo bros and on Twitter at super halo bros. would love to interact with you. Once again, get into our listens and get into our comments, comment below. We would love to hear from you because it is fan mail Friday tomorrow on locked on angels. That's right. Check out the voicemail line in the episode description. If you want to leave us a voicemail, we hope you'll come back and join us for fan mail Friday. Until then, my name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike. And that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here for this discussion. Friends again, get in our comments. Let us know what you think of today's episode and give us your feedback and your comments about any of today's topics. We'd love to hear from you and we'll see you back here tomorrow for fan mail Friday. This discussion is just evidence as to why the angels can't be patient because they are constantly turning this roster over (laughs) because they don't have any depth.